What's going on guys? It's Josh here with Take Him TV and today we're going to be talking about saddle hunting and uh, the setups that I use. Um, I'm still new to this so I'm going to kind of make this video for the new to intermediate side of people who are looking to get into saddle hunting and uh, the people who are looking to try and get some information about some of the products that I use and uh, why I chose the products that I use and uh, so on and so forth. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the bag that I chose which is it's an XOP bag I just picked it up this year at the Iowa uh, Deer Classic and I love it so far because hold your platform right here on the back on the bottom it's hard to see it's got these straps hold your sticks in place and you can just throw it on your back and go the interior of it has so many pockets on the inside for you to put things in it's pretty unbelievable um, but I'm gonna go ahead and take off my platform right now take off my sticks talk a little bit about that and then I'll get to the actual saddle that I use and kind of go over why I chose the saddle that I did all right so right here we have the trophy line mission platform and as you can see it is quite a large platform I mean onto my chest uh, it's it's rather big but I chose that because I do have large feet I wear a size 13 shoe so in a boot I uh, I have a lot of space that I want to be filled and I personally don't like standing on the little tiny platforms that uh, like the tethered predator that's I feel like I don't have enough room on it so I went ahead and chose the trophy line mission platform and I went ahead and tied paracord around the edge to kind of give it more of a lip for my boots to bite on especially here in Iowa we get a lot of snow we get a lot of rain uh, during hunting season so I kind of just wanted a little bit extra there for me um, overall I really like this platform and the way that it's designed um, the cam buckle system the versa button system on it is pretty slick I mean you just throw it around the tree hook it on pull it tight and uh, cam this platform over and it's set it's not going anywhere and to kind of help with that they got a stomp plate right here so after you strap it up and before you cam it over you can push down on this and it'll set the platform even more and then you can go ahead and cam over the platform now on the bottom here they also have a nut that you can go ahead to loosen or to tighten to change the angle at which your platform is sitting on the tree whether you want it flat or you want it bent down or pushed up more to make it more comfortable for you um, overall this platform is pretty nice it's super spacious in the tree and it kind of gives you a sense of a sense of comfort and here in a little bit uh, we're actually gonna go we're gonna find a tree I'm gonna show you guys how I like to set things up and so you guys can actually see how much space I have on this platform with my feet okay so right here we have the tethered Skeletor sticks uh, these are some of the lighter sticks on the market other than like the tethered one stick or the uh, carbon ninjas those things are incredibly light but these things I mean this is like five pounds right here for four sticks and that's huge these four sticks we I can get up uh, 15 18 feet in a tree just kind of depending on how big the tree is and how athletic I'm feeling that day um, but overall I do really like the the system uh, that these these sticks have and the way how they fold up so streamlined um, is pretty impressive and then when you get to the tree all you got to do is fold them out super simple and you got your sticks ready um, another thing I do really 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 like about these sticks is the way that the standoffs are they're not just running flat against the tree they actually have an X pattern shape to where you have more room on the sticks for your boots to for you to basically stand on top of them uh, so for guys like me with bigger feet it's it makes the world a difference 
Um, another really, really nice feature about these sticks is how the sticks all connect together and pack together. So I'll show you that here in just a second. All right, so the way these sticks all pack together, you can see they just slot right into each other on top and bottom. Um, and you can see that right here, they have slots for the bottom and then right here, oop, right there, they have slots for the top to go in. Uh, they do require a little bit of force, but you just kind of line up the bottom. Ooh, we can find her. Get the bottom in, push it in, and then kind of wiggle her, give her a little tap on the butt, and she's locked in, ready to go. I mean, there's no noise here, nothing shaking around. Um, it's impressive on how well that these will stay together for you. Um, when you break them in, they get a little bit looser, but luckily uh, you can just buy these orange stops from Tethered directly. They're super cheap. Uh, they'll ship straight to your house and you can just pull them out and replace them. Here's the saddle that I chose to run or to, to use. I chose to use the Hawk saddle um, mainly because it has this padding on the inside that you can take in or take off and put in when you when you want so for early season archery it's super nice you can just run this mesh you don't have to worry about anything uh, if you're going out late season archery you can put that pad in and it, it kind of gives you a little bit more insulation uh, around your butt area so it kind of keeps you a little bit warmer but overall, the, the way that the Hawk system works is super simple. I mean, it's just like most uh, most saddles. You just got your, your belt right here and your steps. Uh, the, the system is super modular. It'll fit big boys, it'll fit small boys. You don't really need to buy a different size. Um, and then back here on this little dump pouch, I keep all my ropes uh, and my carabiners to climb up and down the tree. I also have my tie-off rope in here as well. So I'll kind of show you guys how I put it on real quick and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so the easiest way that I found for me to put this on is to lay it down flat on the ground, make sure I have my bridge in front of my step-ins and literally just step into it kind of use the bridge, pull it up, and then come around, grab your belt, find the other side, sometimes I get a little lost, and just like that I'm in. Um, when I'm walking in, I like to have it a little bit looser, but overall, I mean, it fits good, the adjustability on this is good. I don't like to run my belt super tight because in the tree, it'll start to pinch, uh, especially when you get this bridge cinched up and you're sitting up there relaxing. Um, so this is just a personal preference of mine on how I kind of like to run my belt a little loose right here it's actually a little bit loo <laughs> too loose for me i've lost a little bit of weight since last winter um but overall this is how i walk into the woods when i'm saddle hunting i walk in with my saddle on find my tree and i'm ready to go up okay so before i go ahead and walk in i kind of want to give you guys a 360 overview of what i look like before i'm about to walk in with all of the gear that i need to saddle hunt um, so there we go obviously I'd be in camo you know but this is what I look like walking in so uh, the backpack leaves both my hands free and then wearing the saddle just kind of eliminates me having to put it on once I find a tree and when I get there I can just start to go right up the tree instead of you know having to tear everything back apart and uh, create a bunch of noise, uh, letting all the deer or 
animals know that I'm here, I'm in the area, and to me this is just the simplest way to to do this, honestly. It's quiet, effective, and uh, doesn't really get in the way too much. So we'll go in, we'll find a tree right now, and I'll kind of record the process of how I get set up uh, in the tree and what I do um, in setting up all my equipment. I think I found the tree that we're gonna go up. Um, normally I like to do trees about this size or just a little bit smaller, uh, but this one's probably about 22 inches in diameter. Um, 18 inches is probably like perfect uh, for me. I'm uh, 6'1", 230 pounds, so I'm, I'm a pretty big guy. So I'm gonna show you guys how easily these Skeletor sticks go on this tree right here. Uh, I mean, it's just a breeze and the, the cleats on these sticks just bite these trees so hard. It's, it's insane. And this, I mean, all, what it, all it holds it on is this little itty bitty quarter inch rope. Um, it's rated for like 400 pounds and it will not slip, it will not do anything. And I think that's kind of because of their patent uh, locking system here, uh, which I'll kind of show you guys up close here. So the first thing that I normally do is I'll walk up to the tree and I'll put that stick right in line with my belly button up on the tree. And then you kind of got to lasso the ropes up and might take you a couple tries, but throw it right around the tree. I just like to take the rope right up to the top, just a little bit higher then the locking ring and step away and then the way that this locking system works is pretty nifty and it's just a big old cross and then tuck the rope behind push her down and she's stable I mean right there you heard it set in it is not going anywhere they are Super tough, super durable, uh, but I'll do an up close real quick on how the whole locking mechanism works. So hopefully you guys can see this here pretty good. So stick set up on the tree and with this rope you'll go around or you could even probably go under, but I like to go from the top, go around hook it in the first top loop, bottom loop down here, top loop, bottom loop, and down. And so it makes this X pattern, and then you just tuck the excess right in the back, and push down, and she's seated pretty well on there. I mean, these sticks are incredible, like, it's crazy on how hard they actually do bite the tree. So you guys could, you can leave them out if you want, but I definitely wouldn't, um, especially on public land, like most of the areas that I hunt. But they are pretty amazing. So next I will go over the platform that I use and kind of how that all sets up. And I'll, I'll show you that here in just a second. This is the Trophy Line Mission platform. It's the, it's the much bigger platform that they sell. Uh, and it is on a pretty nifty little setup on how it attaches to the tree as well. All what you really have to do is take this cam buckle system that it is designed and uses. String it out just a little bit. When setting the platform up, you should kind of have it just barely open. Then you'll find your spot on the tree. You'll take that cam buckle. Toss her around.
put it on the Versa button. Kind of rotate to the side here. But that, that side that you tossed around is going to go on the little red Versa button. And once again, I kind of like to bring that rope up a little bit higher and pull that cord tight. Now, if you were up in the tree, I'd be stepping on this platform right here. And then all what I'm going to do is cam it over like that so when you cam it over it's pushing these teeth down into the tree and these things sit like rocks too it's just a little hard to get up in her but I mean there's no movement in this platform you know kind of show you guys here in just a second um, how my feet fit on here and uh, all that. So this was me up in the tree. You know, I'm, I'm up in my platform. Hopefully you guys can see. But this is how much room I have with my feet on this platform. You know, it, it's enough room just for me to uh, kind of move around. But I'll show you the real reason, one of the main reasons why I really like it. Um, get this tether put on dealing with more little branches I like my tether to be right around um, like the height of my head I feel like that's kind of where I feel more comfortable with it and then just clip herself in make sure we got everything tightened down and now we can go ahead and take off the linesman belt because we are clipped into the tree via our tether. Now I'll, I'll just take this and I will put it around the backside, put it right into my dump pouch. That way it's not dangling, it's not in my way or anything. So doing this I feel like I don't have like I'm carrying extra ropes so now you know this is where you gotta you're, you're trusting this knot right here so this is why people like saddle hunting so much I mean this is comfortable you can stay like this all day all afternoon all day it, it, it's super comfortable it's super practical um, Hawk even makes it's like a back hammock hooks right into your bridge right here and it'll kind of help support your back so you can lean a little bit more but I think uh, what I like to do most is just kind of hang out really um, super comfortable super light super lightweight super easy to move and this is the more I mean impressive thing with saddles you're able to get shots around these trees all the way around so like even if I needed to make a shot over there I can you know I'm, I'm firm in my saddle I can pull back and make a shot onto my weak side technically without having to try and do this whole kind of movement right here however it is doable a lot of people do like to do this movement to kind of stand up to do backward shots um, that's not bad either and you kind of have your bridge here holding you up so that's always nice but overall I mean just how you sit in the saddle is super comfortable and say you want to 
like sit more. Well, you can bring it down and you can literally sit like you're in a hammock. It's truly awesome what these saddles did to the hunting market and everything. Uh, the only couple things that I'd like to do with my setup is upgrade away from these Prusa knots. Uh, I'd like to go to like a Luck or a Kong. Um, they're just easier. It's like a one-handed operation. You just let slack and you pull as to where these Prusa knots are a two-handed operation. Um, but next, I'll kind of show you guys what my whole bag setup looks like. It's going to be a little bit different because this is in the way. Um, and where I like to put my bow and all that kind of stuff. But I'll, I'll walk you guys through that here in just a second. So, Alright, so what I like for my bag and bow setup is I like to run this little guy. It's just a HR or HME bow arm. In Iowa, we're not allowed to uh, use screw in arms, so we have to use these ratchets, which is kind of nice. It's it's also a little annoying at the same time. But the easiest way I've found for me to set this up. is to take the ratchet around the tree first and then it's right in your face so you're not trying to like reach around the tree and do some weird stuff to it uh, but from here you can, you know, it's, it's a little awkward because you got to, you're doing like a two-handed operation, basically, or a three-handed operation, basically, with two hands. But don't make, make sure you're not on your tether. I like my bow to be kind of out on my front side or I, and on my, my shooting hand side. So for me, that would be my right hand. And then I will take this carabiner and I'll work it under underneath here. And then from there, I can take my bag my bag right up there so now my bag is up and free and then I can grab my camera arm out and I can set my camera arm up now this is a homemade camera arm I made this myself uh, this will be my first year trying to use it to film so we will see how that all goes but the way it works is super simple basically just kind of like um, the platform it's got a versa button system so you just pull that strap all the way out and from what I've seen people do they want it like mid waist so that way it's not in your way really you can move you can you know hold on to it and whatever but right here it's kind of seeming pretty pretty perfect to me so that's right there and this is just a little adjustment knob on it and I have a little bubble level on the inside right there where if I loosen that, that'll come right out and I can kind of 
level this camera arm to the best of my abilities. But right there would be my camera arm setup. And so with this, like you're in, in the saddle, I can take this if I want. And I can, you know, film around the tree this way. Or I can, you know, push it back this way and film out here. And I can film on the back side of me. So this right here should change a lot for me this year on how I film. And if you guys want a tutorial on kind of how I made this whole camera arm setup, just let me know. All right, well, hopefully this video helped you guys kind of decide on if you guys wanted to start looking into saddle hunting or if you guys found out if it wasn't for you. Uh, overall, the process of saddle hunting is very simple, but it does have a lot of pieces that connect into it, and it can become a little bit of a handful for some people. But the process is super simple, super easy setup. I honestly think the hardest part is just finding the right tree and the spot that you're wanting to hunt. So let me know if you guys have any questions over the gear that I used in today's video. And uh, let me know if you guys want me to try and review any other gear that you guys might have any questions on. Uh, with that being said, I just want to say thank you for watching today's video. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, it would mean the world to, to me if you guys were to share this video to others uh, and subscribe to this video as well. I'm trying to do something a little bit different here. Uh, it's not definitely pushing me out of my comfort zone just a little bit uh, but I'm glad that I am having people start to watch my videos and uh, and like them so if you guys have any video recommendations for me as well please drop them down below in the comments uh, I love your guys's feedback on videos I love when you guys are talking to me about my video and so on and so forth so with that being said I'll see you guys later and uh, hopefully next September you guys will catch me hanging out in the trees See you later.